Alô? Eu ele foi chamado. Yeah, yes, I, I just uh, I was muting myself. Yes. Uh, ah, okay. And uh, okay. next uh, next Saturday it will be the exam test number three, inshallah. So, so you will start, then I'll be around. Okay. Until you finish, inshallah, like last time. So I will have two sessions because I think it's when the energy, and I don't know oh. if I'm able to finish today these three sessions. If something left, we can start with it next time. I'll I'll try to see how we absorb today. Uh, that, that should be okay, inshallah. And حتى, even next week, if you could not finish and something is left, we can uh, we can start with it the week after so that you finish your part. Inshallah, I'll try my best. Uh, inshallah. Right. Um, how many uh, uh, join now? Let me see. That is the, yeah, here it is. Oh, still participant uh, limited, huh? Five only join. Uh, yes, it's only five so far. Uh, wait, well, I can wait later. Till, uh, 12.43 in my in my computer, maybe two minutes. Yeah, 33 in my computer as well. Yes, yes, yes. yes. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep watching and admitting them once once they come in, inshallah, doctor. Uh, okay, yeah, doctor. But I'll wait uh, even after 45 to okay. allow them to join, inshallah, before I start the lecture. It's inshallah. I put material actually on the uh, on the blackboard. I put some papers. I put the three sessions PDF, but I might after the lecture, after we finish, I might uh, update the 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 presentations. Okay, but I yes. put it. I put it since uh, last night. Okay. Uh, Normally they ask for it so that they can be able to maybe print. Yeah, yeah. Some of them they want to print and take notes. I that's why I bought it even at three a.m. I bought it at three around oh, three a.m. But uh, when I was uh, revising today, I was going. Uh, there are some type, you know. Uh, yes. That's yeah. why I will update inshallah after we finish. Inshallah. Yes. I And project we discussed today or, or when? If you will discuss it in the, in the last half hour or so. Um, if, if Yeah, if, I have I have the list you sent uh, according to the choices. Yes. I have this word uh, file you sent me. Uh, okay. And I try to make the lecture while the lecture is going because it cover uh, some points. And mm -hmm. also the papers I put on the uh, blackboard, I put a folder. Uh, called the uh, Mohammer publications uh, related okay. to CSB. Uh, yes. I think I bought also the uh, inlet air cooling uh, paper. Okay. Uh, yes. So they can, there are uh, some papers related to the topic uh, you shared with them. Uh, and actually, yeah, maybe to add to that, uh, I'll be working on the, on the last two, two uh, project ideas so that I'll put more details as much as possible so that it should enable them to get started also, inshallah. Oh, oh, the, the first one is the uh, district heating and cooling is one of the my idea lists. The mm. one I, it is? Because yeah. You, you, yeah, okay. Khalasa. So Actually, if, I if, found if, that from number one to number five, what you have uh, proposed, I included them all. And then I added okay. at the end, so that all right. seven. Uh, all right, I I, I will, uh, inshallah, try to uh, allow some time for quick, because they need to start working. Yes, exactly, yes. And I uh, think now we have 15. If you wish, you can- So we can start. 16 yeah. now, I'll, I'll admit the rest whenever they join. Right, okay, I'll start now, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. مساء الخير دكتور اسماعيل مساء النور اهلا وسهلا كيفك دكتور؟ سو اي ثينك 18 18 ناو اهلا وسهلا سو وي كان ستارت اي ام شيرينج ماي سكرين اوريدي رايت يو ار سينج ماي سكرين يس رايت ليت اس ستارت ذيس از From the title, this is about uh, concentrated solar power, mainly thermal uh, applications. 
and uh, it has different uh, applications. So what is the CSP? It's very common now. Uh, CSP stands for concentrated solar power. Uh, in this technology, we concentrate the solar uh, light or sunlight using mirrors. Of course, we use different types of mirrors, as we'll see, and direct the light to a receiver uh, at the focus of this mirror, uh, heating a circulating fluid, of course, in a pipe uh, or in a receiver. Uh, this heating fluid will, uh, with the heating from the solar uh, concentrated energy, will uh, generate uh, water vapor. If the working fluid is water, we call it a steam or the, the vapor of any other material because now we are using um, organic uh, fluid or organic Rankine cycles. So we can use other fluids as well, other than water. Uh, so uh, this vapor generated usually at high pressure also, and it will be at high temperature. We take it to the turbine that is usually the same like Rankine cycle or organic Rankine cycle. So we have the steam generation or vapor generation at high pressure, high temperature. We take it to the turbine to rotate it and turbine usually is connected to electric generator to generate electricity. Then the vapor at low pressure, low temperature, we condensate it by the condenser that is cooled either by uh, sea water or river water or by cooling towers or by air, <laughs> whatever the cooling uh, technique. So uh, in general, usually there are what we call solar map or uh, solar atlas, like also wind atlas or weather data. Uh, we have centers to measure the uh, weather uh, data, including the solar radiation, uh, many station in each country and these stations are usually connected interchange data and also the there is satellite for weather uh, measurements so these maps are available but each country try to develop its own atlas we have uh, this effort now led by kakir or king abdallah uh, city for um, atomic and renewable energy we are leading this effort to have the national uh, with their data and I think they published this in, in their website but you can get it with permission send them email and you can get always their data from them but what is known here that the solar radiation is not equal uh, all over the world uh, uh, some countries are called the sol uh, solar belt which have the higher or the high solar uh, insulation from these maps the color actually uh, here in the map I have a color code here is giving what is the solar radiation per unit area per day. Uh, you can see our Middle East in Africa and part of uh, the uh, kingdom is, is in the high solar radiation, uh, solar belt. And uh, that's where the this part of the north uh, west of the kingdom in Tabuk, Deba, where the kingdom started building solar plant, also in this area of Neum. Uh, uh, the new city of Neum will be also powered by uh, renewable, different renewables. Um, uh, so solar radiation component, uh, we can divide it into three main component, direct, uh, diffuse, or global. Um, actually, direct. also there is reflective uh, solar radiation that uh, hit the surface of the ground and reflected. Um, uh, CSP uses direct normal radi radiation, we call it DNI, which is the, the, the light that comes in a straight line directly to the surface we want to have this uh, radiation effect. And some of the radiation, we call it diffused radiation, that is the radiation that is scattered, this beam, light beam is scattered by some molecules or particles in the air like water vapor particle, dust, or whatever, especially in cloudy days, the light is scattered, and not all of it go directly straight to the surface of the ground. So this is called diffuse. Even after that, it, most of it will be, find its way to the surface of the Earth. Also, we have the reflective. The global is the submission of all this uh, irradiation coming uh, from the sun. Of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, techniques or equation to calculate 
for each location on the earth by knowing the longitude and latitude and the angle to the between this location and the sun uh, radiation such that you can calculate uh, the ghi or the global horizontal irradiation or the direct normal or the the fuse you can this is the course of uh, me539 or solar radiation has these details we have one course in the undergraduate one in the graduate uh, uh, this is a chart giving the global horizontal radiation distribution worldwide. And I want you to pay attention here to the scale. Again, this is a color code. The, this pink is the highest radiation also you find um, in the Middle East and a large part of the uh, west area of uh, the kingdom. Uh, the, the unit here is saying tot daily total I mean, here the unit in kilowatt, hour per meter square, actually per day, uh, because he said daily total, but he's writing only here kilowatt hour per meter square, but also we should understand this is per day. I mean, it is the average over the daytime. We know that the daytime have a part of it, uh, there is the sun, part of it is night, so, but here, this is bare day. I mean, we need to divide by 24 hours to get it in kilowatt per meter square for design purposes. Um, when he said here, yearly total, this is the average over the year, over the year. So it is kilowatt hour per meter square per year. So when we come to know how much kilowatt uh, coming, we need to divide this. If we have the annual or yearly total, we need to divide the number, which is 2000 here, for example, 702 kilowatt hour per meter square per year. So this is the, we put the number of year, which is 8,700 something. Uh, and do we, because this is average over year, you imagine they are taking the average over year. We have uh, day and night, we have uh, summer and winter. So the average of course is a small, uh, per year, uh, okay, when we calculate. But when we calculate uh, uh, the kilowatt, we need to take into account not only kilowatt hour per meter square, it is per year as well for annual and per day for uh, daily average. Here, this is the direct normal radiation with some calculation. You can estimate it from the global one. You can have it here. This is the, uh, also we have here the west and south part of the kingdom is the having the uh, moderate to high, uh, close to the high um, uh, values. Uh, excuse now, me, doctor. Yes, please. Uh, I have a question here. C can you please go back for the two slides back? Uh, yes. This one or the previous one? The previous one. As we yes. can see here, doctor, yes. Uh, as an example, in Saudi Arabia and the Western part, okay. We have the highest number of uh, kilowatts that we can ex extract it from uh, uh, the sun. Okay. Yes. My question here that we have many countries, I think, located in uh, equator. Look, uh, it's called equator, equator, equator line. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe these countries, okay, will be hotter than us. Okay. So what's the reason that we have uh, this much, okay, of a kilowatt that we can extract it? Uh, it's, it's, as, uh, as we just were discussing or uh, saying that the amount of solar radiation reaching uh, uh, the earth depend on the angle of the location, depend on longitude and latitude. I mean, location like uh, uh, above the equator or below the equator uh, with respect to the sun radiation, how much will hit the surface of the earth, how much will uh, just go parallel to it. Right. So, so we can see that the, the countries that are located up the equator, so it will be, uh, will will have, uh, uh, more potential uh, of uh, sun radiation. And, uh, and we can, we cannot it see is, it is, this is nature. I mean, this is what what is this uh, chart is giving, is the, what the nature is is doing. I mean, mm -hmm. this is the highest radiation is in this uh, area above the equator, and also is not on the equator, as you can see, even below the equator, maybe with the same yes. uh, number of degrees, you you see the symmetry around the equator. Highest yes. is not at the equator. So, 
My question all the reason, okay? Is there any specific reason or, yani, as I said, this is geometrical, geometrical. I mean, the sun radiation coming with the straight light. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe it go parallel to the surface of the earth rather than hitting it. We are talking about the radiation that is perpendicular to the earth's surface. Okay, okay. okay. But, but there is an angle between the earth, you know, the earth's curved curv 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 surface, not a straight uh, surface. So due to the curvature, this angle, uh, some light will be going just tangential to the earth and uh, some will hit it with the angle, some will hit it perpendicular uh -huh. and, and so on. Okay. okay. Right? Victor, yes. may I uh, interrupt? Yes, please. Uh, one, I think one of the reasons that the equator does not have the radiation is that the countries on the, uh, or the land on the equator usually have rainforests and clouds which block the uh, but, but but yeah you are right the clouds make a lot of uh, solar light diffuse but here this is charts for the global horizontal that include the normal radiation and the diffuse as well uh, i agree with you that the normal will be less as you can see here it is even much less in the equator that you see it in the low, lower level here because of this, because most of the sun even coming here, sun radiation coming, you see here, it's in the middle uh, here, but here is in the low side for the normal radiation because it diffuses more because of the uh, humidity or it is raining most of the year. Okay, but as I said, if you want to understand these details, uh, it is in, the, in another course that uh, give you the equation how to calculate uh, how much coming uh, red, uh, solar radiation, global or uh, normal radiation coming to any location in the earth, so just knowing longitude and latitude. There are a lot of equations uh, in the course of uh, solar energy. Um, I can find uh, this and make it available document to you for your uh, further reading. But of course, in this course, you are not asked about that. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Joshua. If yes, you don't mind. Yes. Uh, because uh, that's something that we have been going through last week. Yes, maybe you are, Dr. Antal. The angles also. and the orientations. So if you're going to refer to um, uh, the documents that has been shared last week and chapter nine in the book, it gives a good introduction to this. And talking about how much energy is falling at what time of the year, at what latitude, and that something can be found there. So sorry for interruption. Lala, this is good since you, you have already covered. So, um, and the book also have good material for that. Uh, so I think, but if he needs further reading, but I mean, in my part, I'm sorry to say you are not asked in this course, but I'm talking about my module because maybe Dr. Antar will have some, uh, something coming in his day exam or he stressed some points that I, I didn't know because I didn't attend last lecture. Uh, so, uh, but uh, you agree with me that it depends on the geometrical relation between the sun radiation and the location on the Earth, right, yeah, Dr. Hunter? So we come back here to this different uh, thermal solar application. Uh, we have the uh, low temperature range of flat plate collector, solar chimney, solar pond. I think Dr. Hunter covered uh, this part. Uh, and what we are going to cover here, the immediate temperature uh, linear focus, which is parabolic trough and Fresnel uh, collectors. Uh, by the way, some people uh, read here uh, uh, Fresnel as uh, Fresnel. The S is silent, it's not pronounced. Um, and also we have the high temperature uh, application uh, where we have point focus, focus more, the solar radiation will focus more. Uh, the temperature is higher than 400 degree. So we have the central tower, we have the parabolic dish. Now, if we go one by one about the available uh, technologies, as I said, a lot of detail in, in, in designing the uh, solar concentrator and getting its uh, optical efficiency and thermal efficiency, 
um, uh, you have a lot of uh, equations that include uh, geometry. Uh, I mean, the relation between the sun uh, radiation uh, beams angle hitting the surface of the collector and the reflection, what is reflected, what is uh, reflected away from the receiver, what is reflected on the receiver uh, to get uh, concentration. Uh, these details, I'm not going to ask you about it in this module, uh, but I provided uh, one of the detailed paper for, from our group uh, on the uh, uh, design analysis and efficiency or performance, calculating the optical efficiency, thermal efficiency for parabolic trough uh, that is actually published in the Journal of Energy Conversion and Management with one of my master students. Uh, and we have uh, some other work that was done we're from MIT group. Uh, it is published also, but we did not contribute on the solar uh, efficiency of solar towers. And you'll find the procedure of calculating this uh, optical and thermal efficiency uh, from uh, different uh, concentrated solar power uh, devices like the parabolic trough or central tower or dish or Fresnel collector, you will find the procedure in your book. Uh, uh, here, I want just to focus on uh, general features, how it works, what is the principle, what is the uh, limitation, advantage, disadvantage, and to know how much power or thermal uh, heat coming from the collector, we need to know what is the efficiency overall, the efficiency of the uh, reflector. Uh, it includes two types of efficiency. When the solar light come hitting the surface, part of it will be um, uh, reflected from the surface away from the receiver, as you can see here. Some of it will be uh, absorbed with small amount in the in the reflector itself or in the body of the collector. This will be converted to heat and it will go to the construction and it is lost. Part of it will hit uh, the receiver. According to our design, we need most of this solar radiation to be reflected on the receiver. And uh, how much light coming into receiver out of what is incident, this is we call this ratio optical efficiency. After that, the receiver now absorb the uh, energy from the, uh, the uh, reflected light on it, and then the receiver will be hot. So it will lose, since it has temperature for 100 degrees or so, and it's surrounded by air, so it will lose heat back uh, to the air by conduction convection and also by radiation, then this is thermal losses. So the net heat that will go to the fluid inside the reflector uh, or the receiver, uh, sorry, inside the receiver, this is the useful heat that we take from the collector. This useful heat now uh, over the total coming uh, radiation will give us the overall uh, efficiency of the reflector, which include, as I said, part of it due to optical losses, part of it due to thermal losses. And the higher the temperature of the receiver, the higher the thermal losses, right? So let us look at the uh, uh, parabola. Yes. Just to ask, uh, uh, Please. It's better to, to have the, the, the much uh, heated the receiver, the better efficiency or what? Uh, uh, for, for, for the efficiency of the uh, collector itself, the higher yes. the, the receiver temperature, the higher the thermal losses. So this less efficiency. One. Less efficiency of the collector, right? Yes. But for the thermal power plant, we know that we need high temperature and the higher the temperature is the higher the thermal efficiency or conversion into work in the steam cycle or gas turbine cycle, we need high temperature at the inlet of the turbine. You remember that because the turbine yeah. is an expansion process. We need to have this happen at high temperature for the expansion. You remember my talk about the compression we needed at low temperature, expansion we needed at high temperature because of the work and the shaft work is integration V2B. 
VDB. So at uh, high temperature, V is high, so we get high expansion work. But yes. uh, in the compression, we need V to be small. That's why you have in Rankine cycle, we pump, uh, whereas the pressure of the fluid while it is liquid, right? But yes. in the elite of the turbine, we need highly superheated uh, paper, right? Yes. So we have two uh, contradicting things. We need the receiver or the solar receiver to give us a very high temperature uh, to have thermal, high thermal efficiency in the conversion cycle, right? Either it is a steam turbine or gas turbine. Uh, on the other hand, the higher the temperature of the receiver, the higher the thermal losses uh, from the solar energy coming to, to the collector. You understand? So, okay. of course, there is always optimum uh, value because also um, the higher um, uh, the temperature you want, this means higher concentration, more capital cost, and so on. Okay. Uh, again, if you want to understand the optical losses and thermal losses from a parabolic trough, we have, I have put one paper in the, uh, I put about 16 papers in the folder. Uh, one of it is about the technical, uh, techno-economic analysis of parabolic trough in Saudi Arabia. So you can see the detailed analysis of the different elements or losses of the uh, losses from the receiver in, 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 in parabolic trough. And similarly, you can do it for a central or solar tower. Uh, usually, we have the parabolic trough, uh, as I said, we have curved surface, like part of a parabola. Um, you can imagine it as a part of a cylinder. You cut it and you cover it with a shiny uh, reflective uh, surface. Uh, of course, so to have this uh, curvature with the proper uh, dimension and uh, polishing or uh, have high reflectivity is, is a cost. Manufacturing cost is, is not uh, small here, but the cost is high. Also, to have it with this setup um, or installation, as in I'll, I'll discuss in the next uh, slide, also represent uh, cost, the structure itself, how to make a large plant covering large surface area. But the main component here that you see, this is a civil structure, usually from uh, steel structure then that uh, hold this uh, reflecting surface uh, on place uh, as i said uh, uh, part of a parabola and then you have uh, the receiver here of absorbing pipe it's usually um, a steel pipe uh, in which there is uh, the fluid that we need to uh, heat this steel pipe uh, we cover it uh, by another glass pipe to be transparent this steel pipe as i said it's opaque and we paint it with a black uh, paint or the surface will be black to absorb all the heat coming or the solar energy coming to it. And we actually put, because when this pipe get very hot, it will lose as it absorb radiation uh, efficiently, it will lose heat also by radiation efficiently. So uh, to reduce this, um, radiation loss and also uh, uh, conviction losses to the air because this is structure usually is, is installed in the open uh, area, especially in desert where you have uh, wind around and air motion. So you have high conviction. So we cover this uh, by what we call it glass uh, shield from quartz. Quartz is, is very transparent uh, to uh, light or solar energy. So you have it very transparent and you have vacuum in between uh, to reduce the conviction from the pipe to the uh, glass tubes and to the surrounding air. And also uh, it will represent a sort of um, uh, allowing the, the light to go in one direction, reflect, uh, stop it to go in the other direction to be lost back to the surrounding. This uh, parabolic trough range of temperature due to nature of concentration uh, is uh, 400 degrees. As I said, this parabolic trough is like parabolic mirror. It has a focus, uh, each surface has a focus line. 
and then at the focal line we put the um, this black uh, steel tube that is uh, absorbing uh, all the solar radiation coming to its surface and then inside it there is a fluid I want to heat uh, to reduce the losses the thermal losses back from the pipe to the surrounding we put um, uh, quartz transparent uh, cylinder which is the, as a solar shield or a, and also we have vacuum in between because you know to have convection from pi the pipe you should have air around it so we make it vacuum uh, tubes so the it's a line focusing a linear receiver tube uh, all, this type of receivers or uh, plant with parabolic need a lot of water for cleaning and uh, as we see for other uh, things so, uh, concentration by parabolic mirrors uh, this type of um, uh, solar field from parabolic uh, trough it is suitable if i want to have thermal uh, storage is feasible to install it with it um, it is the most commercialized uh, technology of um, uh, concentrated solar power since it was the first to be developed so it has a long uh, time for development and improvement uh, so it is proven uh, proved itself commercially uh, good for hybrid option uh, i will talk about what we mean by hybrid hybrid if we need to integrate it with conventional uh, power plant um, but it need flat uh, land uh, but as I said, it has good uh, receiver uh, efficiency because the temperature of the receiver is low, not that high, like the solar tower or uh, solar dish. Uh, so the, the efficiency uh, of the receiver is high, but the plant efficiency is low. That's why he's saying good receiver efficiency, but low turbine efficiency. Uh, this is, I just wanted to give a close uh, view of the uh, parabolic trough. How, as you can see, we have different uh, lines of this uh, parabolic trough and the receiver here, this is the pipe that is actually it's called vacuum tube receiver. This is the black one is this steel tube that is uh, coated uh, with black paint. Uh, as you can see, it's surrounded by a very transparent uh, quartz tube and in between there is vacuum and uh, of course this is also costly in manufacturing and uh, these tubes are connected I mean we have we can have very long line here uh, uh, of the tube and then we connect it to the next uh, row here of the collector tubes also either in parallel or in series in parallel that all the tube have one header all add to each other but in series is sometimes if we need high temperature so we take all this uh, heat and then the hot fluid at the end we pass it to the next row to have more heating so at the end it go go like a, a coil or something uh, so we have at the end a high temperature but what I want you to notice here that um, uh, this here, this is uh, the parabolic trough uh, is installed in this uh, steel structure, but all of it is might be installed on a tracking system because you need always as uh, a sun uh, location or due to the rotation of the earth around the sun, the angle between the, the, the mirrors or the surface of the collector with the incident radiation will vary from one hour to another or even from one minute to another uh, so usually we have a, a controls we can have a sophisticated control system that we have this uh, parabolic trough uh, is installed on a tracking system that it feels the time of the day and calculate the angle and start changing the angle of the parabolic trough surface to follow the sun uh, radiation such as that always the design angle is always kept uh, during the day from the sunrise to the sunset. Um, uh, due to this motion of the, uh, of course, the receiver will move uh, relatively has 
same position with respect to the surface. So if all this structure move together, the receiver and the uh, uh, parabolic trough uh, surface uh, all move together, such that the focal uh, or when the light is reflected, first I need to keep the angle between the sun radiation and the surface always perpendicular as much uh, during the day. And the reflection then, if the relative position of the receiver with respect to the surface is the same, so always the light, most of it will be reflected to the receiving pipe. So, and as I said, uh, this, uh, pipe is connected to the main header, as you can see here, to go to the other row. Uh, so here this, we should have flexible joints uh, of the piping, which is also add some difficulty to the uh, manufacturing and installation, because you need to, to have no uh, leakage, but at the same time you have, you need uh, to have a flex, flexible motion. And another difficulty with the, this uh, parabolic trough um, is the uh, wind, uh, the wind forces. So when you have windy time, the wind uh, speed will hit the, the surface and it will represent some um, uh, maybe damaging effect on the steel structure. So you have to design it properly. Uh, based on stress analysis and other things of the metal uh, structure or the um, frame uh, where you installed your receiver. And also there will be some shade effect of this uh, end part that will, uh, you can see here there is a shade from this piping part. So it's called the shade end effects. Also this uh, holding uh, structure that holds the pipe on the focal, and then also it will uh, have some uh, optical effect. It will prevent some solar radiation from hitting uh, the pipe. So this is also um, represent this uh, part of the optical uh, losses. As you can see, this even from this photo is clear here, we have some shading. We call it uh, end effect. This is conceptually, uh, speaking, the solar radiation coming, as you know, in uh, straight lines, it will be hitting the parabolic surface, reflecting um, to the receiver, and the receiver coming, called the fluid here in blue, uh, arrows go uh, out in, in uh, hot. As I said, this is a receiver pipe, but uh, we should um, remember that uh, we have uh, a pipe or a glass pipe surrounding uh, this, as I said, surrounding all the way, this pipe. And we have vacuum here in between. There is no uh, air here, no, no substance uh, in between. So uh, this is to represent the resistance to, for uh, this hot pipe to lose uh, heat back to the surrounding by convection by radiation. Okay. Uh, this is the second type, which is the solar tower. Uh, stating here in uh, maybe this uh, old uh, data that temperature re range from 600 to 800. Actually, we have some concentration can reach 1000, uh, around 1000 that's suitable for gas turbine application. Uh, the focus is uh, from a field uh, of mirrors that we call it heliostat. So it has here flat mirrors, but each mirror is installed in a tracking system such as that solar radiation uh, coming from the sun, uh, hitting the, the surface of this flat mirror and then reflected to a point, single point. So we have a tower. At the top of the tower, we put uh, a receiver. Uh, of course, there is several structure here to build this tower and also some geometrical analysis to um, distribute the mirror around the tower, such as that at this focal point of all mirrors uh, depend on the location of the mirror with respect to, tower, to the tower. We put its angle and also we have the solar radiation coming in a straight line. So we need to have very um, uh, 
smart tracking system to keep always whatever solar radiation incident on this mirror at any time of the year reflected uh, of the day uh, reflected to the uh, focal point here. As I told you, we need to track the solar radiation during the day from sunrise to sunset, but also uh, from season to season because the uh, Earth's location with respect to the sun will vary from one month to another, from one season to another, depend on the uh, Earth's location with respect to the sun during the year because the sun rotates around itself during the day, but also rotate around uh, the Earth rotate around itself during the day and rotate around the sun during the year. So you might have um, single axing, uh, axis tracking to follow the sun during the day only, and you might have double axis to also change the angle uh, when the sun or the Earth change its position with respect to the sun during the year. Uh, as I said, the solar tower uh, can give us a higher temperature because it is a point uh, concentration or focus, uh, we need uh, flat mirror, so it is simple uh, to manufacture compared to the parabolic trough. As I said, we call it central receiver, uh, water consuming to clean the mirrors, and also um, uh, heat storage, or uh, actually I'm, I, I hate this word heat storage because heat cannot be stored, uh, but the slide I get it from a reference, of course. Uh, it is thermal storage. So please, uh, when you, heat, you read heat storage, you should understand this is wrong conceptually. Heat cannot be stored. Heat is a form of energy that is intransient, crossing the system boundary or moving from one high temperature to low temperature. Uh, it's an energy. It's a form of energy intransient. We cannot store heat, but we can store thermal energy. So in the next slide, I change this heat. I wrote thermal, but I missed this one. Uh, this also, I will correct it. This is thermal storage. Um, uh, again, it has because it has high temperature. Uh, so usually we use it for large capacity because the installation of the solar heliostat and the tower is very costly. So we cannot do it for just a small scale applications. We do it for large scale applications. Um, the, also it has high temperature. So the efficiency of the receiver itself is low, but the cycle has higher efficiency. The, the conversion energy conversion cycle, the turbine. The turbine cycle has higher efficiency as I pointed uh, out uh, previously. This um, is the close, yes. Mr. Smile, I have a question yeah. please. Please. Yeah, is there any specific length for the tower? Um, of course, you, you, there is optimum uh, geometric distribution here. As you can see here, the distribution of the mirrors um, is sort of like a circle. It is not exactly a circle. It may be oval uh, path. Uh, and also the, the ratio between where is the number of mirrors or the, the, the diameter of the circle of the heliostat to the height of the receiver uh, also is, is a matter of uh, maybe better performance if you have a taller uh, receiver. But again, um, these are not a single decision from uh, effic optical efficiency point of view. It is also the total uh, or overall, because you have the cost, you have the uh, several uh, consideration because I said when you have a taller uh, then you need to look for the uh, how to build it from a strong uh, concrete or uh, also when the effect you know uh, so it's a combination of factors but of course there is effect as you can uh, see this again in this first chapter how to to relate uh, the, the heat or uh, optical uh, efficiency of the solar tower with respect to what is coming incident on these mirrors. Uh, I think usually taller, uh, the higher the, receive, the tower is the better. But again, we have economic inputs here. Okay. Doctor, if there is, if there is no uh, uh, thermal, thermal energy storage, can it still operate a plant? 
there yeah, you know, of I mean, course the the thermal storage what you need is uh, it's uh, for stability or for if you need sort of a steady operation in your uh, plant uh, because you know if you depend only on the solar uh, tower uh, or the collector then the temperature of the fluid coming out of it will vary from one hour to another right yes. because of the solar radiation vary from one hour to another so you will not have a steady operation of the power plant itself the thermal power plant that we discussed in our previous uh, chapters the gas turbine cycle or the uh, steam turbine cycle we assume that the inlet to the turbine always at constant temperature isn't it this yes. will not be true if you have this uh, solar application. So for the stability of the plant, you need um, uh, that. But in the design stage, if you are designing a plant based on solar only without thermal storage, what you make your design, you design based on average values of the solar radiation. Right? You have the solar radiation during the day vary from minimum in the sunset to maximum in the noon time or around noon time to minimum, uh, sorry, from sunrise to maximum uh, around noon time so to minimum again at the sunset, right? So you can take average and make your design based on average. That is if you have constant input. But uh, actually operation wise, this will not be steady state operation unless you have a thermal storage that whatever heat coming from the sun uh, you try to store the thermal energy in this uh, fluid coming in, in a storage tank. This might give you a uh, stable temperature at the outlet of the storage system to your plant. Okay, this will make the averaging uh, thermally actually. You try to average during the day because you have a flow rate that has variable temperature but is coming to a bulk body of the material inside this storage tank that will uh, take always stabilize the temperature to an average value. Okay. Okay. Doctor. So, yes, this is just a, a view of. Uh, I have a question. I think this is in Spain, please. But uh, uh, more than one solar tower at big uh, land. Doctor. Yes, please. Yeah, Doctor, I have read before about this technology and I think... Hello? Hello? Yes. I'm not hearing you. You read about this technology then? Yes, Doctor. Uh, and I think they use some kind of salt-based material for storage of thermal uh, energy. So is it the one used with this? Uh, yeah, uh, usually molt, molten salt can be used with the solar tower, um, uh, can be used with the parabolic trough as well. Uh, I'll talk about this uh, in a minute because, um, uh, as I said, we need uh, in the receiver, we need uh, what we call heat transfer fluid. Um, the heat transfer fluid uh, absorbs the heat from the solar in the receiver, either it is parabolic trough or um, a receiver in the tower, in the solar tower, uh, a fluid should receive this uh, thermal energy, right? And then get heated. If I use uh, something like water, then it might evaporate uh, in the receiver. And when it becomes vapor, the rate of heat transfer will be less from the solar, from the pipe surface, the receiver pipe surface into the fluid. So usually we try to use a material or heat transfer fluid that it will be stable at high temperature. Like a molten salt can be, it will behave as a liquid uh, even at high temperature, right? But uh, we can use um, also some oils. So it depends on the rate or the range of temperature you are developing on the uh, receiver uh, surface. Uh, if you are in uh, with high con solar concentration ratio, uh, like the solar tower or uh, parabolic dish, uh, this one in the screen now, then you have high temperature in the range of 700 to 800 or more, then you, you need to use a very stable fluid. Uh, in some application, we heat the air directly. 
but in, in parabolic trough or solar tower, we might use the molten salt. Uh, but also this salt is stable up to a specific temperature you can use. Um, actually, there are, according to our work, uh, we have different fluids with different uh, characteristics. So we select the heat transfer fluid that go into the receiver. Then we have another heat exchanger uh, to take the heat from this fluid to the water uh, that is used in the Rankine cycle. But uh, with the solar tower now, we can heat the air directly. But of course, uh, efficiency, of, because the heat, the air capacity, uh, air thermal capacity is low. So there is also, um, we need to use the air at very high pressure so that we uh, have its density is high so it can absorb more, uh, more energy from while, while passing through the receiver. Actually, design of the receiver, especially this um, solar tower receiver and this parabolic dash, we are, it's a, it's a big uh, technology or uh, art that you have the air pass through a porous ceramic material. Uh, why ceramic? Because it can withstand high temperature. As I said, it can reach 1,000, 1,200 uh, degrees Celsius. Why porous to have larger surface area for heat transfer between the air and the, uh, the receiver body. The receiver body is the ceramic uh, porous material that will absorb the heat and withstand, it can go to very high temperature. Then you need to have good heat transfer between the uh, air and uh, between the air and the receiver material. So, uh, as I said, molten salt of is one of the uh, good uh, media uh, that absorbs the solar uh, energy and then convert it in a heat exchanger uh, to the working fluid in your cycle. Molten salt might be stable up to 600, 700 degree. Uh, that's why when we go to higher temperature, I think uh, material like air will be suitable. Uh, and that's why um, uh, solar tower at very high temperature, we use it with gas turbines. But when we use the uh, solar with the Rankine cycle or a steam cycle, we go for the parabolic trough since we don't need temperature higher than 500 degree. Okay? So, so uh, doctor, oh, sorry. Yes, please. So please go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the molten salt, so uh, yeah, and what I understand now, the molten salt, it's used as uh, storing the energy, you mean? Um, uh, molten salt itself uh, is a working fluid that I use it for the solar field to absorb the heat and I can circulate it to another heat exchanger. I can take it, take the heat from it to the, my working fluid. I have the option uh, to put bulk tanks for the solar, uh, for the uh, molten salt to be thermal storage. But I have the option not to put the storage as well. So the molten salt now will observe the heat and will store the heat. And how are we going no, to actually, uh, actually, it will take it with it and then I can transfer it to uh, another fluid with the heat exchanger. Actually, I have some slides uh, replying to your question. Uh, sure. Then let us go, and then uh, at the point of the thermal storage, we'll, we'll discuss this, okay? So the solar dish, um, uh, the, it's a focal point, and usually also we have a big, not big tower, uh, just a tower here. We, have, we are building one in our lab, uh, Dr. Amr al Qutb is building one. As you can see, the parabolic trough is maybe built from segment of uh, with the parabolic curvature and also it might have some tracking system where you put the uh, receiver in the focal point of this uh, parabolic uh, surface and you need to uh, keep tracking the sun might have one uh, axis uh, tracking or two axis uh, tracking to follow the sun during the day and during the year temperature is high because you have the uh, concentration or focus is as a single point. Um, uh, also, since it's single point, the receiver size is so small. Uh, so one, one dish, usually, usually, we don't put a big receiver here. Uh, 
because of the structure and heavy weight and also ratio between the solar dish and the receiver due to concentration. Uh, I need high temperature. So usually the capacity is about 25 kilo one. And usually you put here type of engine that is compact inside in size like the Sterling engine. Uh, uh, also this Sterling engine, you can read about it, uh, about its thermodynamic cycle and the cooling is by air. Um, it is under development. Uh, it has a service relatively high efficiency, but uh, we don't have here a thermal storage. Uh, by the way, I will revise this lecture to uh, when I see heat storage, I will write thermal above it and you understand now why I, I don't like to have heat storage. We don't have heat to be stored. Heat is a uh, transient form of energy crossing system boundary due to temperature difference. But uh, if there is no temperature difference, has no heat. If I have insulated surface, we don't have heat. Even we have thermal energy inside at high temperature, but we don't have heat because heat appears when there is heat or energy transfer due to temperature difference. Now we have the coming uh, technology. This is just the shapes of, uh, you see is this, this surface is very shiny. The curvature, it seems, to manufacture the parabolic uh, trough act, uh, dish actually is difficult. You can, because it's diameter might be five to six meters, it's a big dish. Uh, you make it from segments, as you can see here, or here it is more clear, a, a small uh, a square uh, mirrors, so you put it together uh, to take the, or circular here as here, but it is difficult to have this very curvature from one plate to have this uh, uh, parabolic uh, dish. This is the Fresnel. Uh, the Fresnel um, is actually similar to the parabolic trough. Uh, we were just talking about the reflecting surface. Uh, in the parabolic trough, it is a curved and manufacturing a curved surface is difficult compared to um, flat mirrors. Uh, the common between uh, the Fresnel uh, collector or uh, it's called the linear Fresnel reflector. Sometimes you write it LFR for linear Fresnel uh, reflector or collector. Uh, that we have the receiver is the linear tube uh, and the solar energy or uh, solar light is concentrated, reflected by a set of mirrors to that uh, for, uh, linear receiver. And the mirrors actually we can have each mirror is installed on a tracking surface that uh, we can adjust the angle of the mirror depend on its uh, location under the um, linear receiver such that all the mirrors uh, do a similar effect to the parabolic uh, trough and reflect all most of the light uh, on the uh, receiver uh, pipe. Uh, the, 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 the beauty of that uh, linear Fresnel that um, it is simple to manufacture because it is uh, flat uh, mirrors. Um, uh, we can control it more. Uh, I mean, the tracking si system is simpler because you uh, change the angle of the uh, mirrors or individual mirrors and you don't uh, move all the structure in the parabolic trough. You remember, you remove, you move uh, all the structure to track the sun. I mean, the parabolic trough or with the receiver, you move all of it here. Only you, do, you move the mirror. So the tracking system also is simpler and cheaper. So manufacturing is easier, but due to the not perfect or uh, reflection uh, to the focal point, uh, you might have less efficiency. However, now linear Fresnel um, is uh, really under much development. Uh, even when we um, started this work with the MIT in 2010 or something, we had some uh, meeting with the Aramco, because Aramco is uh, at that time uh, uh, a good surplus of uh, oil income and they wanted to diverse or mix uh, the energy sources in the kingdom and also save the oil 
Uh, number one, to protect the environment from burning fossil fuel. Second is to save the oil for uh, exportation or for added value industry on the oil, that, like converting it into uh, petrochemical that is of uh, more uh, cost. At that time, the oil price was about $140 uh, per barrel. And uh, again, uh, when you have um, the company like Aramco has surplus, they can invest on more uh, renewable energy uh, because the market is uh, starving for it. And also uh, you need to save the oil for uh, either exportation or added value industry. So when they came to us to discuss uh, what we can do with them, they focus on developing um, uh, either solar tower technology or Fernel, they said parabolic draft colors is well developed. So we need to develop new technology that is, uh, and this is what is going worldwide actually. The Fernel is coming uh, now, uh, taking more attention for development to improve its efficiency. Now it can reach 90% uh, efficiency of these uh, uh, collectors. Right, but temperature again, like uh, para parabolic draft in the range of 400 degree, it is suitable to heat water uh, for steam cycles or even uh, ranking, uh, organic ranking uh, cycle. So uh, surfaces are uh, flat mirrors. Uh, it is as a, at that time, it is under development. It's still uh, structure cost is less. Uh, also wind effect on the surface or a collector uh, is not there because the mirror you see it is near the ground and a small uh, mirror, mirror is not a big structure like the parabolic trough. Um, so, so at that time, uh, maybe in 2009, 2010, there was one unit, uh, five megawatt, but we'll see the history of that. This is a closer uh, view of the mirrors that each mirror you can, uh, you see it uh, have access here that it can, I can change its position or a angle with respect to the receiver. Uh, now the solar thermal application, we can divide it into two main categories, uh, utility or commercial or large scale, let us say, and domestic or small scale. Uh, we can use it for uh, electricity generation. This is most um, for large scale as a standalone or uh, in, in a remote place, or in if we can connect it to the grid. Also, I can hybridize it or integrate it with other projects like uh, wind or conventional, even conventional uh, power plant. We can use it for industrial process, like if you have uh, heating, like if you have um, a factory for um, like SAFCO for uh, this fertilizer, they need a steam to, for the manufacturing or the fertilizer or the uh, like also food animal processing or um, uh, like Arasco, they need they need the steam for the process. So you can generate the steam for them. All if you have a closest factory, you need the steam for the uh, clothes painting and other things. Uh, so you might install the uh, boilers that operated by solar uh, energy. You might need it for melting something, uh, uh, sterilizing or we can use for cooling. Yes, we can use thermal energy for cooling. I bought some uh, our of our uh, uh, patent ideas in the last slide. Also, we can use it for water desalination. And Dr. Antar has a big uh, project or big experience in this line. Uh, as Dr. Antar covered last time, we can use the small application for like these water heaters. We can use it for HVAC. We can use it for cooking. Uh, solar ovens, solar food dryers. Um, food dryers and cooking is long time ago used by human, but to have solar uh, thermal for uh, cooling is, this is um, an old technology that we use heat for cooling, uh, like absorption system, but now it is find its uh, market now because of the availability of solar energy technologies. This is conceptual wise how a solar uh, plant, yes. Uh, in total, what can we say is the main advantage for each type? If we say probably, what is the advantage uh, among the, the other? 
if you just read the slides again, you will find that uh, each uh, technology has uh, some features that differ from uh, the other one. Uh, like, for example, a parabolic trough is a well-developed industry. This is an advantage because uh, technology development takes time. Uh, it's a range of temperature about from 400 to 500 degree. Uh, so if you decided now to build a power plant, uh, you can order directly a parabolic trough uh, system, like the one now built the largest plant in the world, I think, in Morocco. It's based on parabolic trough technology because it's available. It is on shelf technology, right? You're not going to suffer with it or whatever. And um, solar tower, if you need high temperature, as we can, we'll discuss later uh, uh, why we need solar tower. Uh, I don't want to just jump to a conclusion. I want to go gradually with you to understand part by part. But uh, again, each technology as I said, uh, has advantage and disadvantage. Uh, the limitation of parabolic trough and the uh, Fernell is the uh, temperature level. We cannot heat uh, more than uh, 500 degrees Celsius. Solar tower and solar dish, we can go to higher temperature because of the concentration ratio. The more you concentrate the sun uh, radiation, the, the more the temperature you can reach. Uh, but the problem with the uh, solar tower is the capital cost because you need to build the tower and the heliostat field is large uh, and also civil structure and other things. For the solar dish is the um, uh, size. It's a small in size. Mm -hmm. So it depends if you need this small application, you can build a solar dish. Uh, if you need large scale, you go for either parabolic trough or solar tower depend also on the land available to you, depend on how much solar radiation coming to you, okay? So, no. so you have to look from different angle, uh, maybe the controlling parameter, what technology is available near my market or near my country? Uh, we tried to buy, uh, during the, our collaboration with MIT, we tried to buy a solar uh, tower plant from Spain, but the cost was very high. The cost was very high compared to the size we asked it for. Okay. No, sure. Now, uh, now let me uh, ask you one question. If I draw a circle here around this part, this is what? Well, Rankine cycle, isn't it? We have the boiler, we have the turbine with the generator, we have the condenser that we call it with a cooling tower or we cool it by uh, seawater and then the condensate steam, we take it by pump to the boiler again. We studied this simple Rankine cycle, isn't it? This part in the circle is simple Rankine cycle. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. We can also yes. here, the difference here is the steam generator here. We have a, the water come around the coil. You can see here around the coil, just as this symbolic presentation in which we have a hot fluid that might be the molten salt, might be the molten salt. And the molten salt coming from a uh, sort of, we, of here, uh, accumulator or a header that uh, take the, or we have a circulation system of this molten salt between a solar field uh, that uh, here in the solar radiation come to the parabolic trough or Fernell, uh, heat the receiver where we have the molten salt, then uh, it raises its temperature so we can take it directly to our uh, boiler, right? Because this molten salt might reach a temperature 560 or 550 degree, and the water I need to be heated to 400 degree. So there is a heat transfer rate between the molten salt and the water around here, which is coming as liquid, and go here as a superheated vapor or superheated steam, right? So uh, as we said, we might have uh, this uh, accumulator here. Why we build the accumulator uh, here? Uh, this accumulator here we stabilize because we need a large body or large mass here. Uh, so when we have the hot uh, fluid coming, um, it will be mixed with whatever in this uh, tank 
uh, to uh, moderate or to make like average temperature that we go to the uh, this uh, molten salt storage. Uh, here, actually, you can have we can have three fluids in this uh, type of cycle. First, to have water or any organic fluid in this Rankin cycle. This is the working cycle of the uh, Rankin cycle, working fluid. We have the uh, fluid run going into this uh, parabolic uh, trough or the solar field. We can have uh, 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 sensitized oil that can withstand the high temperature uh, or molten salt itself. And we have molten salt in this storage tank, one for the hot uh, storage, one for the cold, I mean, because we have uh, cold fluid, I can take it to the tank and uh, while, of course, uh, to keep it here to go to the um, cold fluid, go to the solar uh, parabolic or solar collector, then go back, I can take it directly. Actually, this part I can remove or I can keep. So. If I removed, then uh, we do have this, what we call accumulator here to stabilize the temperature, to stabilize the, and instead here we have the, the hot fluid coming here, will have variable temperature depend on the hour of the day. But to uh, keep average value, then you, you have to take it here. But to stabilize more and to keep some energy or store some energy during the night time, you need to, to build this thermal storage one tank for the hot uh, fluid, one tank for the cold uh, fluid. If you have a thermal storage, you have two advantages. You added two advantages to your cycle, solar cycle. First, you can use it uh, after sunset for some hours, depend on the size of the tanks. The second thing, you stabilize the more the temperature uh, coming to the uh, boiler to heat uh, your uh, working fluid. So this cycle will not feel the transient variation here of the solar radiation from one hour to another. This uh, plant will not feel that effect. It always will have almost constant temperature coming here at the inlet of the boiler, where you have the superheating effect, right? So this power plant might have a steady operation with some fluctuations, of course, but is much less than if you don't have this thermal storage. Clear? Now, this solar field here, uh, I draw here a parabolic trough or a Fresnel, uh, but it can be solar tower. It can be solar tower. It's a solar field, let us say. It can be solar. Let me give you another um, schematic. This is the same uh, cycle. Right? Uh, here the steam turbine, uh, here the collectors, we have the storage tank, but this accumulator is important, I said, for stabilizing the temperature coming out from the solar field. So you see here the temperature about 390, so you cannot go for the uh, steam temperature higher than this. Actually, I can build here a conventional boiler and connect it here with a valve here and valve here. Of course, also we can put valve here. Not simple valve that like I'm doing, but uh, these valves here can allow us to use uh, the solar field without the boiler, uh, the conventional boiler. Huh? Or we have this at night, I can separate this uh, loop. Uh, to save the bumping power of my working fluids. And I use the conventional boiler by burning natural gas or oil, whatever. And we have the Rankine cycle. Uh, during day, I can close uh, this, uh, separate this, isolate it. And I have uh, the, the, the solar, completely solar. This is how I integrate. Uh, actually, in this case, if I have uh, this boiler uh, that work at night, I don't need for the thermal storage because this thermal storage is very bulky. It needs a huge size and uh, it is adding to the capital cost. And by all means, it will work only for some hours, six hours, five hours. The more hours you want it to work after sunset, the more cost and more place you need. 
So if you integrate solar with the conventional power plant, then you don't need actually the thermal storage, but you need this accumulator during the operation to, um, as I said, average the temperature. And instead of uh, varying the temperature here, you add this to a bulk uh, uh, material or like here to stabilize the temperature. Um, I can give other configurations. This different configuration of the same. This is a solar tower, uh, also Rankine cycle. Well, with solar tower, actually, because the temperature is high, you need to have the thermal storage to, because the cost already high of the solar field. The heliostat, this is different mirror, you have seen it, is, is really high. The molten salt temperature coming from the solar tower is about 600 degree, but when it comes uh, to the power plant, so this is the steam generator, then you take the steam to the turbine uh, to rotate the electric generator and give electricity. The uh, steam at low pressure temperature go for cooling tower to condensate and come back. This is the Rankine cycle. Uh, this is the thermal uh, storage. Uh, as I said, the most proven material and uh, proved itself is the molten salt. We'll have some more details. Um, I will stop now for a break if you want. Uh, if you have any question, please ask. Yes. Please come in. Uh, yes. No, I just say that we, we need the break for some time, please. Yes, yeah, I'm giving yeah, 10 minutes a break. Is okay, fine, 10 minutes? Fine, thank you. We'll come back at 2.10? Yes. But, uh, now you digested at least the concept, how it works, different technologies, and uh, what we need to, uh, I'll give more thoughts on which technology is suitable for which application. Okay. Well, I'll leave you now and uh, come after 10 minutes.